In mathematics, it's always good to show examples that a result works, but it's far more important to be able to give a rigorous proof that holds true in all cases. In this video, I want to talk about various kinds of mathematical proof. Are you ready? Let's discover the maths. The aim of a proof is to show the indisputable truth of a mathematical result. It may be based on assumptions that appear in the result itself, as well as previously proved results and axioms. At all times we have to use logical arguments. The great thing about a mathematical result that's been proved is that it remains true for all time. On the other hand, before we have a proof, a single counterexample a situation where the result fails is enough to show that the result is false. A common type of proof is known as direct proof. This involves arguing step by step starting from what we know until we've demonstrated the truth of some conclusion. Suppose for instance that we're trying to prove that P implies Q. In a direct proof we start from P and after a series of logical steps conclude that Q must be true. Direct proofs are the most valued. A second type of proof is reduction to absurdity. Say we want to show that P implies the truth of Q. We start by assuming that not Q is true. We have that P is true and then after a series of logical steps we arrive at a contradiction. A contradiction of what? Of the assumption that Q is not true. Therefore Q must be true, which is what we wanted to show. An example of proof by reduction to absurdity is the famous demonstration that the square root of 2 is irrational. The opposite is assumed, that root 2 is rational. This then leads to a contradiction forcing us to the conclusion that root 2 is irrational. A similar technique is the contrapositive. This is based on the fact that the propositions P implies Q and not Q implies not P are equivalent. So, if we can show that not Q implies not P is true, we can conclude that P implies Q is true. We can use the contrapositive not only to prove results, but also to obtain equivalent definitions. For example, a map is said to be injective if, when two elements are different, they have different images. Using the contrapositive gives us an equivalent definition of an injective map. If this is P and this is Q, the above is equivalent to not Q implies not P. Therefore, a map is also injective if it meets the condition not Q, if two elements have the same image, then not P, those elements are the same. Another method of proof is by induction. We made a separate video on this topic and illustrated it using dominoes placed one after the other. If one falls, then so does the next, and so on, until they all fall. The induction method is used when we have a set of propositions that can be shown to be true, one for each natural number. So if we show the result is true for n equals 1, and if this is true for n, this is the induction hypothesis, it implies the result is true for n plus 1. Then by the induction principle, we can say that the result is true for every natural number. Using the induction method, we can demonstrate certain formulas, such as the formula for the sum of the first n natural numbers, and others of this type. We can also prove by induction the expression of Newton's binomial, etc. Anyone who's studied maths will know many instances where the induction principle can be applied. Finally, I want to mention a technique that's very useful, for example, in the theory of finite groups. As you may know, a group is a non-empty set for which there's an operation that satisfies the associative properties, there exists a neutral element, 
and every element is symmetric. The minimal counterexample arises when we want to prove a result and we assume by reduction to the absurd that it's not true. If the objects we work with are finite, there'll be a minor cardinal where the property fails. Then we analyze how this counterexample has to be and in the end we reach a contradiction, an example that doesn't exist. Therefore, the property is shown to be true. Sometimes focusing on groups for this type of proof, the famous classification of simple groups is used. We'll deal with this in a future video. So far we've talked mostly about mathematical results of the form P implies Q. There are also results of the form P if and only if Q, which means that P and Q are equivalent. In this case, to prove P if and only if Q is equivalent to demonstrating that both P implies Q and that Q implies P. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again soon to discover some more maths.